Hi, welcome to Mr. Dyer's Musings. I'm Mr. Dyer, and today we're going to be taking a look at some old school flint and steel. Thank you for joining me today as we take a look at flint and steel, and not like the lighter that I showed you earlier. We're talking about real flint and real steel. If you're new to my channel, in this channel we take a look at old artifacts and we discuss the history of them and how to use them in a practical fashion. I got a ton of videos about the American Civil War, a lot of early campcraft videos, and early scouting videos. And this one, we're going to look at some antique 1910s, 1920s. Uh, Boy Scouting equipment. Now the first one, we're going to have to go even older than this one here. We're going to take a look at the Eagle Fire Set. Now, if you're new to my channel, I did a video about uh, friction sets. I had a bunch of them that were all lined up. One of them was from the Eagle Fire Company. And this one dates from the 1910s, and we're going to open it up and see what was included, and we're going to uh, discuss it and on individually how to use it. So as we open it up, we see that it comes with a steel file that's been well used. See it comes with an instruction manual. It comes with some tow. And it comes with a very odd chunk of flint. And it comes with some charred cloth. Now, let's start talking about char cloth before we get into the instructions and everything. Because char cloth is going to be pretty necessary whenever you're using a flint and steel. You can also use charred punk wood or some other charred material. But you want something that's going to be dried out and that's going to be able to catch that uh, spark and create that ember for you to start your fire. So how I create char cloth, and there's a lot of videos out there on how to do it. And you don't even have to go as far as the, what I did on this one. I just took an old Altoids can, tin, and you only need one hole poked in it. And honestly, if there's so much air, this is a loose lid in the Altoids tin, you don't even necessarily have to poke, poke a hole in this one because it can escape through the, uh, the hinges and around the front. But you take some cotton material, you can take some uh, punk wood, you can stick it in there, close up the lid, throw it in a fire for about 10 minutes, forget about it for a little while, take it back out, let the tin cool, open it up, and you have the charred material. Now, in the old scouting magazines from the 1910s and 1920s, you could actually buy charred cloth. The kits came with charred cloth in a wax uh, envelope. Boys Life talks about it. The old scout handbooks also talks about charred cloth and how necessary it is. They don't mention it at all when discussing the friction kits, but they do talk about it when using the flint and steel kits. So let's take a look at these instructions. It says, Instructions for Fire by Flint and Steel, Eagle Fire Set Co., Indianapolis, Indiana. S sets made by scouts for scouts. This set contains one of each of the following Atkins Silver Steel File, Black Norwegian Flint, Pack of Special Charred Cloth, Hank of Tender, and Instruction Sheet. The instructions, make a small pad of well shredded tender. Place two inch square of charred cloth in the center of tender pad. Put file point down through pad, being careful not to cover charred cloth with tender. Hold it with the left hand and with flint in the right hand, hint the file on the edge with a sharp glancing blow. Direct the sparks onto the charred cloth. Then the cloth glows. Remove the file, pick up the tender pad, Hold it around the cloth and blow into the flame with long, steady breaths. If need be, you can sw swing the pad of tender in front of you a figure eight direction. However, for speed, it is best to blow as directed above. Keep tender dry. It absorbs moisture readily, but is the best tender available if kept dry. Bake it if necessary. Extra tender or charred cloth may be purchased for 10 cents a pack from your local agent. Any questions on speed fire building, relays, or ceremonies will be cheerfully answered. 
Send self-addressed stamped envelope to the address given below. All sets tested and guaranteed. Uh, sets made by Scouts for Scouts. So there's your instructions. Now this is the toe that it's talking about or the tender that it's talking about. So when we use it, we're just going to uh, take just a little bit, not much. Just like that for our demonstration purposes. Now the problem with this type of flint and what's odd to me is it has a hole drilled in it and it's rather heavy. Whenever you use flint and steel, you really want a piece of flint that has um, an edge to it. You know, think, think like really, really sharp because what you're doing is you're scraping the steel and you're removing parts of the steel with the flint. So this one doesn't have a whole lot of uh, sharp edges and I really don't want to bust up this, uh, this, well, this artifact. So instead, what I'm going to do is use another piece of flint like so. And as you can see, it has some thinner, sharp areas that we can use to strike our steel. And that's what we're going to do. And this is the original file that came with the set. And it is very, very abused. Okay, so if you're going to do this for actual camping purposes to make a fire to cook, you know, having tender on your person like this is uh, the ideal. When you're out hiking and you find some tender, it's a good idea to put some in your pocket and uh, you can dry it out at camp around a fire or at home. Um, but it's just a good idea to have dry tender with you at all times. Now, what we would do with this, this is a great starting point, but honestly, we would want to go find some other things like grasses, some bark, scraped bark, shredded uh, poplar bark, or uh, you don't really want to use leaves per se, but you'd want to find other fine material. And this would maybe be your center because it's super fine. It would catch really easily, but you'd create a bird's nest and you would hollow it out in the center and you'd put your charred cloth in that and you work from the fine to your thicker stuff on the outside. Okay, so We'll have to do another video discussing that and showing the ideal situation. But for the purpose of this video, since we're really just focusing on the, the artifact itself, not necessarily the skill, then uh, we're just going to go with what we have here. So it talks about putting the file down on the char cloth. Then you want to find an edge on your flint. You want to go with right, right there. And you scrape. don't want to smash your char cloth. There we go. We can see that there's an ember right there. Got some smoke that's coming up. And it's still smoking. Like I'm not doing anything to it. You can see it going. Just like that. Okay, so at this point, if you want to save some of your char cloth, which is what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull off that. Maybe we'll use this for the other demonstration. We're going to wrap this around like so, and we're going to just blow into it. All right. So me just holding this in my hand, I can feel the heat. I haven't even blown into this log yet. I'm just gonna go. You can see the holes blowing. 
So, you know, we just keep going in that. And you get the idea. So this next set that I have here is a roll-up kit. Now these roll-up kits started being uh, sold by the Boy Scouts of America in the 1920s. The only difference is that the metal bar, the steel bar that it came with, actually had two holes according to the picture. I have yet to find one uh, for sale that's that old. Um, it's common to find these other ones with just a plain, straight, flat piece of bar that even goes back to the 1940s and 50s, uh, even 1930s, but in the 1920s, the ones with the two holes in them are very, very difficult to find. And in that kit, it also came with some toe. It came with some old school steel wool, also in a uh, waxed wrapping. Toe came with flint, and it also came with some charred cloth. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm getting over a cold. This right here is a, a modern fire starter. It's always a good idea to have you know, multiple ways of making your fire. Your first and primary is always going to be a lighter. Your next is probably going to be matches. And then after that, you're either going to go to flint steel or a ferrocerium rod with magnesium. Um, that bow drill is definitely going to be a last resort for making a fire. It's when you have absolutely no other options because you're going to be burning so many calories doing that. It's just better to have you know, something like this, and this is so compact and so light, it just makes sense to have some flint, some steel, even if you don't have a steel, pair it on a piece of flint, and you can use a, a high carbon knife, if that's what you got, but um, it, it's, again, it's just really light, easy to carry, this roll-up kit is very convenient. So, again, for this, we're going to take our charred cloth, we're going to open up our tender, I'm going to put that in there. We're going to take our steel. And for this one, there's a couple different options. You can take your char cloth and you can put it on your steel. And you can strike it like so. As you can see, this is throwing a lot more sparks than I was getting with the, uh, the file there. And you don't want to ever go upward because if you go upward with your steel then it could chip off pieces of your flint and get into your eye so that's never a good idea so you always want to strike down either with the steel I prefer striking down with the steel versus with the flint as you see so you can put down There it goes. Got an ember again. Just stick that in there. And just like before, you're going to wrap it around. And they talk about doing like a figure eight. So once you wrap that. Now, a nice thing about ferrocerium rods versus your other modes of fire is the sparks that come off a of ferrocerium rod. It's so hot that if you get a piece of fat wood or if you make uh, feather sticks in such a fine way, then just taking the ferrocerium rod itself, and what I do is I take the blade and I hold it still and I pull the rod towards me. Boom. I mean, that's a big difference. I don't even have to use the magnesium and scrape it off to get that lit the way that it did. So for your contemporary scouts, your contemporary trekking, you know, flint and steel is always nice and, to have and all, but a good pair of cerium rod and a piece of carbon steel, that's really the way to go if you're going to go for this type of fire. I hope you got something out of that, the flint and steel, one kit, the Eagle brand dating to the 1910s, and you have the roll-up kit that dates to the 1920s. 
Even up until the 1980s, the roll-up flint and steel kit was pretty popular. You can still find them on eBay. They're pretty plentiful. Uh, check it out. Or you can make your own with just finding some good old-fashioned flint, or maybe some quartz, getting some carbon steel, and you're good to go. But the Pharisee and rods definitely a notch above that, and even better than that would be a match. And the best option is get a lighter. You know, a lighter doesn't weigh that much, and it lasts a while. If it's not lighting within about 10 seconds, and it's probably not going to. So <laughs> you need to make some other tender or, or find some better tender. If you like the video, please click like. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Check us out on Patreon. Support this channel. We're going to do a lot of stuff this summer. Visit all sports of different sites all over Ohio. And we're able to do that because of our supporters on Patreon. I hope you have a wonderful week. Give a kiss and hug to your loved ones. And take care.